I'm going to start this tutorial by opening a file from of a Phobos painting that I've saved on my desktop. So I've launched Adobe Illustrator and I'll click the open button. Here I'll go to the Phobos paintings on my desktop and if you want to view these paintings better, you can view them as icons. If you're on a Windows computer, I'm sure you can find a drop-down menu to view them as icons or as a list. Today I'm going to choose this painting to work with. Open. I can see a small black line in here, and that means that the size of my artboard does not match the size of my painting. I want them to both be the same. So I'm going to zoom out by clicking the view menu and zoom out. You'll notice that the keyboard shortcut is control or command negative. So I'll type command negative so that I can see the whole thing. Now I'm going to click on the artboard tool and carefully I'm going to make my artboard the same size as the painting. You'll notice that if you miss this corner to make it larger, you may end up drawing a new artboard. Don't do that. I'm going to delete that, go back to the original artboard, and make it the same size as the painting. Now that I have my artboard the right size, I will click on my selection tool as a way of deselecting the artboard tool. I see that I didn't match it exactly perfectly, but that's okay for our purposes. Now I'm going to choose my layers palette. Looks like a little graduation hat. And I'm going to add two layers by clicking this plus button. So now on the bottom one, that's my original artwork. I'll just name it that. Painting is what I'll name it. I'll name the next layer BG, standing for background. And the last one I'll label My Art, because this is where I'm going to make some art. It's important to have the correct layer selected when you draw squares on top of it. For instance, if I have this layer selected and I were to draw a square, that would be putting it right on top of the painting, and that's not what I want. I want for this layer, let me cut it, to be on the My Art layer, and now I'll paste it. So that now, if I hide my art with this eyeball, I can see only the white square disappears. And if I hide the painting, that layer disappears. We'll be using these in a little while. I'm going to lock the painting layer so that I don't accidentally work on it. I'll delete this, and you'll notice if I click this and try to put something on it, it says you can't do that because it's locked. And that's what we want to do. We want to keep this layer locked. So now the first thing about this tutorial is to get a range of these colors into my color palette. My color palette is empty right now. Yours might have a few colors in it, but mine is empty. First, let's make sure that the top left button is selected, not the border button, but the fill button. And then with my eyedropper tool, I will sample the main colors in here and add them to my palette. That process looks like this. Click on a red area. You'll see that red color show up in the color palette. And over here, I'll choose New Swatch and OK. So now I have that red color in my swatches palette. Let's get a couple of blues. And some oranges and yellows. And maybe a darker red.
and some greens, a couple of greens, maybe a light and dark. And some of these pinks. So I think that's a good variety. I maybe will add a pale purple. So I've added at least 10 swatches and that's what you need to start. Now let's go back to the layers and I need to choose a background color for my painting. In this one it's a little difficult but I'll go ahead and make the background color this pale pink. So using that pale pink, let me add that to my colors palette. Maybe I already have one similar to it but Using that pale pink, I know the pink is selected. I'm going to go to my background layer, get my rectangle frame tool, and I'm going to draw a box that covers my artboard. So there's my background color. I'm going to lock that too, and I'm going to move to my art. The next step is to reproduce the painting, simplifying it by drawing squares. I'm going to have to hide my background layer, but I'll work on the My Art layer. And I'll start with this blue bridge. I'm going to choose my selection tool and select it, and then I'll rotate it. I'm going to click the rotation tool and just rotate this so that it's the same angle as the bridge. With my Move tool, I can scoot it up on top of the bridge. And then obviously with my palette, to my swatches palette, I'll click on the color that it is. It's not an exact match, that's okay. I'm going to do the bottom parts of this bridge while I have the blue color selected. And maybe I'll do these two parts. And you can see that my goal here is not to match them exactly. I think I'll rotate this one. I think I'll rotate this one by selecting it, choosing my rotate tool, and rotate. And I'll do the same thing with some of these boats. Another trick that you might want to try is using your selection tool you can hold Option or Alt and get on top of a shape. See how my pointer becomes a double pointer? So I can repeat this boat by just clicking and dragging. I will have to rotate each one a little bit differently. And they have to be selected with the Selection tool and then rotated. There are some shortcuts to these tools. If I type my V key, it'll give me my selection tool, so I can choose that. If I type my R key, it'll give me the rotate tool. Now I'm going to draw the red box that might be the background of these, and I'll make it red. But you'll notice it's in front of everything. So let's look at the Layers palette and talk about that. I'm going to open up the My Art layer. And this red re rectangle is on top of everything. I would like it to be behind everything, so I'm dragging it down. Now the red box is behind it. I can come back to my work and do a green box. Let me get my swatches. I can do a pale yellow box. That's actually quite a bright yellow, but again, it's in front of things, so I need to go to my layers. Bring this behind the green. Yep, that's good. Also behind the red, maybe. There. Looks better to me. I'm also feeling like it's not exactly perfect, so I'm going to hide that layer and get a paler yellow. So you can always add, oops, I have to unlock this. First. 
get my eyedropper tool and sample that pale yellow. And now I can, let's see if that's, and I'll add that. And then back on layers, I can lock that again, turn my art on again, and I can change the color of this one by using my selection tool, going to colors, and I think that's better. <clears throat> I'll need to see the painting in order to get some of that on. So I'll open the My Art layer, and this rectangle that I just built, let's hide that for a brief moment. I can zoom in by typing Command Plus. And now I'm going to, right on my art layer, I'm going to draw some of these. That's an orange one. Do I have orange in here? Yep. I'll do a bunch of orange ones. And then I can also do a bunch of the bright yellow ones. So let me change. I'll leave that one orange, and I'll make this one bright yellow. So as you can see, I'm just very slowly building out what this is going to look like. Let me go back to my original and Command or Control-0 will fit my artboard in the window. Command or Control negative will make it a little smaller. So here you can see how it's coming along. Before I export this, once I finish, I'm going to hide that. I'm going to hide the painting layer because I don't want you to see any of the painting below here, below the My Art layer. You can see that I went beyond the canvas here with that one, and I believe there is a view, trim view. So that will hide everything that I did outside of the edges. You also might want to show your background layer and show your My Art layer before you export this for your classmates. I'm not going to finish drawing these squares right now. I expect you to spend about an hour doing this so you'll get a beautiful painting. Oh look, I, I could at the very least not hide that layer. Um, you want to be sure all your layers are showing except the painting layer. And when you're finished, you'll choose from the file drop-down menu, Export As. And what we're going to export as is a PNG. And I'll go ahead and put it in my same folder just so that you can see it there. Put my initials in front of it. Oops. Put my initials in front of it and export as PNG, showing me what it's going to export. No need to have a transparent background. You can have a white one, but you won't, you won't see any of the background. I'll say OK. And then it's this PNG that I'm going to embed in the discussion board. 